But the differential diagnosis, I told you, cellulitis. Most often it is misdiagnosed as cellulitis and treated inappropriately, and hence patients end up in a lot of problems. Septic arthritis, they, both of them can be there. So always keep in your mind septic arthritis and osteomyelitis can go together, right? So even more dangerous than osteomyelitis is septic arthritis because the cartilage which is there in the joint has a food supply from what? Sinal fluid. What is happening in septic arthritis? All the inflammatory edema is there pent up in the joint and the foot to the cartilage is gone and over and above it the, the enzymes of the bacteria, lysosomes, proteases and all those things they go and kill the cartilage cells and destroy the matrix. What happens? All the cartilage is damaged. Within no time cartilage is damaged. So it, you, you have a joint without a cartilage. What is the use of having a joint without cartilage? So that much is the gravity of the situation when it comes to septic arthritis. Next is all these things, sickle cell crisis, Ewing's. I told you, Ewing's tumors also present just like acute hematogenous osteomyelitis. Most often, this is even a more dangerous condition. Yeah, that's why they say, whenever you take a biopsy sample, you send for two things. Any biopsy has to be cultured and any culture sample has to be biopsied. Why? Because sometimes Ewing's tumors, they present just like acute hematogenous osteomyelitis. What is the, what is the management? The management protocol is IV antibiotics just take as it is IV antibiotics because you can't rely on oral absorption when the patient is having fever when it comes to you to treat the osteomyelitis appropriately. It is always better if you suspect with all your clinical findings being positive better give IV antibiotics. What antibiotics will give? There are so many controversies in the literature. One fellow will say methicillin, one fellow will say nafcillin, one fellow will say oxacillin, one fellow will say clindamycin, one fellow will say cefotaxim. The best thing is give third generation cephalosporin cefotaxim, right? 150 milligram per kg in divided doses, right? Then clindamycin is an extremely good drug. It penetrates the bone like anything. It has a high bone penetration, right? Clindamycin 30 milligram per kg, okay? If you can give clindamycin or cefotaxim IV, right, then splint the bone. First is IV antibiotics. Next is supportive treatment for pain and pain, dehydration, and then splintage. So give IV fluids also because patient may be having high fever, okay, may be dehydrated at times, and then treat for pain because it's an extremely painful condition. You should always take care of this pain part. Next is splintage. If you don't splint, what will happen? I'll just show you an X. Uh, example, I, I just skipped off the sp face of this patient. Uh, I was a junior PG when this fellow came to us because uh, he had an osteomyelitis of the distal end of the femur. Now it was misdiagnosed, he had a pus pointing over the lateral aspect of the femur and uh, it was not diagnosed properly and uh, he, our senior PGs were asked by one of our assistant professors just to give a nick and uh, uh, re uh, remove out the pus in the skin. They have just done that and left him uh, hoping that it is only a cellulitis part. It is open, I am just openly showing you the picture also. It so happened, I, I think this fellow's name is Nikhil, I do not know, I just, just go, can't remember it long back. So the patient went off, the, patient, the fever never came down and ultimately he came to us with a fracture over there for a period of time or one week or so, he came back with a fracture, pathological fracture because the bone has become weak, you have, you have just given a nick in the skin and uh, taken out the pus. But thing is, whole the process of osteomyelitis was going on within the bone and ultimately ended up in a fracture. Now what, what to do? Once he had a fracture, we have to splint him like this. So please do not do like this whenever you have a suspicion. One, first aspirate and confirm. Second, what? Decompress the bone decompress the bone at the same time splint it if you do not splint these are the things they are bound to happen and the next part is surgery decompression make a window in the bone take out the pus even if pus is not coming make a window in the bone so that whatever the pus even if it has to form it will come out through this okay either you make the window by multiple drill holes or take a square or a whole type of a piece chunk of bone lest it fractures you should should be careful enough not to talk so, so much of big rent in it okay but it should be adequate enough for drainage of pus and decompression of the bone. Decompression is an extremely important thing you should never forget and if you do not treat them properly you end up in complications. This pus can go into the blood and affect multiple organs ending up in multiple organ dysfunction syndrome or these, this pus can go in into various organs and again lodge and form abscess at various places like lung, liver and brain, brain abscess, liver abscess. 
and mnemonic consolidation of the lung all those things can be a possibility when the osteomyelitis focus is very near to a joint you can have septic arthritis also and once it is healing what is happening lot of blood supply now will come once the, you have restricted this portion once the lot of blood supply is coming what happens the two things can happen if the blood supply is lost to the physis which is nearby to the metaphysis physis stops growing you end up in a short bone once lot of blood supply is coming to that bone as a healing process what will happen the physis will overgrow and you end up in a long bone got it these two things can happen that were this way and if the process goes on goes on goes on without any stoppage then it ends up in chronic osteomyelitis the acute osteomyelitis will convert itself into chronic osteomyelitis but in between the acute osteomyelitis and chronic osteomyelitis you have one more condition called as subacute osteomyelitis if the osteomyelitic symptoms are there for less than 3 weeks it is acute if it is more than 3 months it is chronic if it is in between 3 weeks and 3 months it is subacute so the pathology here is the fighting between the organism and you if the virulence is less and your host immunity is more whole of the whole of it can get resolved within 3 weeks if it is not resolving suppose say the virulence is slightly higher and your immunity is on the slightly lower side for that given period of time right then you end up in a condition called subacute osteomyelitis which doesn't go as early as acute it stays back for some time but less than 3 months subacute osteomyelitis sometimes it so happens that subacute osteomyelitic focus can stay very very long also there are two exceptions and those two exceptions are ultimately are given in your book i'll tell you what they are the clinical features the acute osteomyelitic features will be there but at low grade for longer time simple all those features of acute osteomyelitis may be there or may be modified but they will be there for some longer time these two are the uh, what what i should say these two are the subacute osteomyelitic uh, descriptions that are given in your textbook one is broadi sepsis and second is garis osteomyelitis for our classification for post graduates if you are there we use mcintyre and gledhill's classification he classified into six types so these the broadi sepsis comes in type 1 and garis osteomyelitis comes in type 4 for post graduates i'll teach a later time what is gledhill and mcintyre's classification of subacute osteomyelitis but thing is when it comes to undergraduates just remember two things broadi sepsis and garis osteomyelitis are subacute osteomyelitic features what are they broadi sepsis is an abscess there in the bone surrounding by dense sclerosis simple now what does this sclerosis mean that means bone has contained this abscess at, abscess at one place that, that means your immunity is sufficient enough to contain the abscess or the infectious process at some place that means you have good amount of immunity but not sufficient sufficient amount to eradicate the disease process am i clear that is broadi sepsis simple here even the same thing can be seen here what is garis osteomyelitis garis osteomyelitis is a low virulence organism it is there body is trying to contain by forming exuberant bone lot of irritation is there and lot of osteoblastic activity is there this is a garis osteomyelitis also called as sclerosing non superior osteomyelitis pus will not come out of this but because of the irritation or the osteomyelitic or inflammatory phenomena that is going on in the bone right there is a lot of new bone formation right and hence it looks more sclerotic so it's called as sclerosing non superior osteomyelitis usually it is seen in the metadiaphyseal junctions it's very difficult to treat actually right so how do you treat again antibiotics for long course you have to give for almost up to 6 months at times and surgery what is the surgery you do in garis osteomyelitis broadi sepsis make a rent through this scoop out and then then make this open to exterior uh, exterior environment that means don't keep it open okay for garis and broadi you can as well cut open it out and then exteriorize it to the soft tissue so that some blood amount of blood supply goes in and then it gets filled up over a period of time just remove the abscess part scoop it out now that is one part second thing is you call it as debridement second is saucerization sometimes whatever the narrow canal is there which is there lodging the pus you make the open a cup has been converted into a saucer simple saucerization is nothing but conversion of cup into a saucer means what the a cup can hold some tea but saucer what happens it, it is widely open got it so once it is widely open all the immunological reactions can come and fight the body immunity system has open access to such so and so pathology in garis osteomyelitis also you can as well decompress the bone the problem in garis osteomyelitis is the pain will be because of raised interosseous pressure here if you can decompress the bone by making a rent or multiple holes sometimes usually we over drill this maybe we go into the middle cavity and then ream it okay by making a rent down as well as up what are all the reamings can come out okay 
so usually the treatment for this is uh, not that clear cut as it is for acute or chronic osteomyelitis but thing is you have good results once you decompress the bone right <coughs> next once the subacute osteomyelitis even subacute osteomyelitis phase your immunity is not good enough or the virulence is very high the osteomyelitis focus will continue over a long period of time more than 3 months then you call it as chronic osteomyelitis how do you define a chronic osteomyelitis a focus of infection in the bone staying there for more than 3 months where there is a lysis or a resorption cavity filled up with infective granulation tissue and a dead bone surrounding a dead bone that is a sequestrum or having a sinus or a fistulous tract which is persistent opening onto the skin discharging pus or these sequestrated bones through it or a puckered scar adherent to the skin adherent to the bone puckered scar of skin adherent to the bone then you call it as chronic osteomyelitis so much what is chronic osteomyelitis simple a cavity lodging a sequestrum with dirty granulation tissue there may be a sinus or may be or may not be a, a sinus or a fistulous tract draining this pus or even the sequestr sequestrated material out or if it has healed there will be a puckered adherent scar and overall there may be a thickening of the bone because there is an inflammation going on periosteum is irritated bone is irritated new bone formation is there which is irregular bone becomes thicker these are all the classical features of chronic osteomyelitis simple the most important feature of chronic osteomyelitis is acute osteomyelitis it has to start as acute osteomyelitis and then it has to go into chronic phase most often usually organisms in chronic osteomyelitis are mixed when compared to acute hematogenous osteomyelitis all of these things are there i told you cavities will be there with unhealthy granulation tissue a dead bone with sequestrum dead bone also called as sequestrum will be there within this cavity and uh, i told you once there is a periosteal irritation or the bone is irritated within the sequestrum body tries to form new bone because something is dead once there is a revascularization happening as a resolution process you have a new bone formed over there that is called involucrum sometimes what happens is once the new bone is formed the sequestrum is the pus the infectious process is still going on what this infectious process does is if the pent up pus is there more of pressure is mounted inside it tries to go out even through this new bone making a rent in this new bone this is called as cloaca that rent in the new bone is called as cloaca right new bone is formed most often by periosteum that is called as involucrum and a hole within this involucrum is called as cloaca all these are the features of chronic osteomyelitis some i told you bony irregularities and thickening will be there and once you take a histopathology of this you will have chronic inflammatory picture there are all the examples of chronic osteomyelitis and acute osteomyelitis of the distal end of the femur where the bone has got sequestrated can you see this bone a sequestrated bone is it clear there visible right a, a tubular bone can you see that that is a sequestrated bone and if you see there is a adherent puckered scar with a discharging sinus and what it is discharging it is discharging pus which you can see as all this um, dirty material in and around the uh, sinus and uh, if you can see this white structure is a bone coming out there is a sequestrum sequestrum is will be thrown away actually for a period of time right this is a this is a case of chronic osteomyelitis another case of chronic osteomyelitis you see this is a bone trying to come out this is a dead bone but what has happened to the native bone it has become irregular thick and if so much of sclerosis Right, there are all the features of chronic osteomyelitis. Sometimes, if you see this chronic osteomyelitis picture, tubular sequestrum, which is there, whole of the diaphys diaphysis has got sequestrated because of the raised tension within the bone in the acute osteomyelitic phase. Now, this sequestrated bone, if you remove, it looks like this. 